Hey guys, welcome back to another what's for dinner video. I've got some really fun recipes that we're trying out this week and I can't wait to share them with you. First off, tonight we're gonna be having a baked balsamic chicken and I'm gonna be making a sweet potato casserole to go along with that, along with, we'll steam up a veggie. And I wanna try some biscuits with some coconut flour. I went through a phase where we were using a lot of coconut flour and almond flour and apparently we stopped because I have some that really needs to be used up. So I figured I would give this recipe a try and I'm gonna take you guys along with me as we try out some new recipes. So, all right, I started by just scrubbing up some sweet potatoes and now I'm just going to peel them and dice them into small bites. I'm gonna probably, I will link a recipe below for you. Um, I'm gonna be using kind of as a guide, but I'm also not gonna be making two and a half pounds worth. So I will be adjusting it. And then we're just gonna cut these into small pieces and put just a little bit of water, like depending on the amount of potatoes, a quarter cup to a half a cup maybe, um, in your pot of, um, and you wanna use cold water. You don't wanna cover the potatoes, just kind of enough to steam them and then we will let that go for about 15, 20 minutes until the potatoes are tender. All right, so there are the potatoes just cut up with a little bit of water you can see at the bottom. And we're gonna get this going for about 15 to 20 minutes to soften. While that's going, we're going to get started on our chicken. All right, we're gonna make our marinade or glaze for our chicken. We're gonna start with a quarter cup of olive oil. I'm gonna use just under what they say um, because I don't use, I'm not using quite as much chicken as they are. And what's left in that bottle looks to be about perfect. But I will have the recipe linked down below for you. And then we need a half a cup of balsamic vinegar. We want two tablespoons of soy sauce. I use the coconut aminos. I'm gonna have to open up another one. Um, but you can use the soy sauce. We just prefer this. And I'm not fully measuring all of this, but that's just what I do. And we want about two cloves of minced garlic. I'm just doing a scoop. About two teaspoons of dried oregano and just a little bit of salt. I did switch my salt to a new shaker, so I have to be really careful because it comes out a lot easier. And we're gonna mix this together. And I have my chicken. They said you could pound it out to a half inch thick. I just cut mine in half, so they're not all the exact same size, but whatever. We're gonna pour this over it and then it says, if you have the time, let it sit for, um, I think I definitely have too much marinade, but that's okay. Let it sit for, what did they say? 10 minutes before you put it in the oven, which is what I'm gonna do. I've got the oven preheating to 400 degrees. So I'm just gonna let this sit until the oven is ready. That'll be about that much time. All right, our sweet potatoes are nice and tender. So I drained them and now I'm just going to mash them with my with a fork. You can use a potato masher. You could really whip them, I suppose, if you wanted them to be, but I don't need them whipped. I'm just gonna smash them. Once again, I am kind of cutting the recipe in half. I think I might've already said that, but I'm gonna take, um, I'm gonna guess that I'm cutting it in half. So that's what I'm gonna start with, with what I'm adding in. But two tablespoons of butter. The recipe does call for unsalted butter, but um, I'm just gonna use salted and leave out the pinch of salt that it calls for. I'm gonna get that mixing in so that the butter will melt. I'm gonna add in about a half of a teaspoon of vanilla and then three quarters a cup of brown sugar and just a dash of nutmeg. And I think I'm supposed to add a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And we're just gonna give that a good mix all together. This is kind of like dessert for dinner, but it is a nice treat sometimes. You can also add pecans if you like, but I'm not huge into adding nuts to stuff. Like if I'm gonna eat nuts, I would rather just have them as a snack. Um, not saying I wouldn't eat them, but I'm not very likely to add them to my recipes. So I am just going to transfer our sweet potatoes to a greased baking dish. And then typically you would put mini marshmallows across this, but I somehow have two bags of large marshmallows open in my pantry. Um, not sure how that happened. So I'm just gonna use big ones and I'm just using my scissors to cut them up. And we're just going to cover the top. All right, so I'm gonna add the chicken in the oven. This is supposed to take about 25 minutes. I need to open this oven door a little more. Uh, this takes about 25 minutes. The sweet potato casserole is supposed to take about 15 minutes, but also it's normally at 375 instead of 400. 
So I'm gonna set my timer for 10 minutes and then we're going to add in the sweet potatoes and the biscuits, which we're gonna go ahead and make right now. All right, so getting started with these coconut flour biscuits, we're gonna do four eggs, which I've got in there. We're gonna do a quarter teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of onion powder, and then two teaspoons of garlic powder, which, you know, some of this is going outside of the measuring spoon, but I don't feel like taking the cap off, so it's gonna be just fine. And then we're also going to mix in a quarter cup of melted butter. And we're gonna mix this all together. All right, in a separate bowl, we're gonna to mix together our dry ingredients, which is gonna be a third a cup of coconut flour, and then a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. And then the recipe also calls for xanthan gum, but it says that it's optional. So I don't have that. We're gonna go without it. I guess I could use a smaller bowl, but that's okay. We're gonna mix the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients. You also typically, in case you haven't noticed, use a lot more eggs in coconut flour recipes then with like regular flour. We're gonna mix in a half a cup of shredded cheese. I'm hoping I have about a half of a cup here already shredded up. Might be a little bit shy of it, but I think it's gonna be just fine. All right, you can use a grease baking sheet if you want. I just have my silicone mat and I'm gonna take, I'm using a, just like a cookie scoop, but it said like a tablespoon full, so I feel like this will be the right size. All right, so it has been 10 minutes. And we're gonna just turn that so we can put the sweet potatoes in. I'm gonna add our biscuits in. We're gonna let all that go for 15 minutes. And let's see if I get the timing right and everything gets done at the same time. Wouldn't that be awesome? All right, so here are the biscuits. I did take them out a couple minutes early because I could see they were starting to get a little dark in the bottom. They're very yellow, but I also have like fresh eggs. So those are extra yellow. So I'm wondering if that's why. Well, I'll let you know how they are. Definitely feel like I could have made them bigger, but I was following the directions. Anyways, now we got our sweet potato casserole. I did steam up some green beans and our chicken. All right, so here is our dinner all plated up for tonight. It looks really good. And I'll let you know what I thought of everything, but in particular, I'm curious about these biscuits. I wanted to hop on and give a quick update like of what we thought of the meal. Uh, it was actually last night. The chicken was really good. I loved the strong, it was a strong flavor, but it was good. But I think next time we decided it was good enough to do again, but probably would tweak it. Um, I'm thinking of, well, we had too much liquid, but I don't know that that was harmful. Um, but we're, I think I'm adding something like brown sugar topping. I feel like the sweet would be a nice contrast with the vinegar and something to give it a little bit of like a crusty top, just a little bit of a, I don't know, a little topping of some kind. So some type of dry rub is what we were thinking. The biscuits are really good. If you don't need a gluten-free biscuit, probably not worth trying these. Um, but if you're looking for something like that, like they were pretty good. What else did we eat that was last night? Oh, sweet potato casserole, of course, that's, that's always good. Um, but I'll have all the recipes linked down below for you. I just want to let you know what we thought of the dinner. So yeah. So for tonight's dinner, we're going to be having uh, cheesy taco pockets, I think is what they were called. And I will have the original recipe linked down below for you. I've already made up my taco meat and I also um, put, up, put a diced onion in there as well. So that is all done. We'll be getting back to that in a second. I have got four ounces hopefully of softened cream cheese. I've had it out for a little bit and we're going to mix this up to get it not quite fully whipped, but close to it. All right, now we're gonna add in a little bit of salsa. This is the salsa that I'm using, but you can use whatever. Not a ton, we're just gonna a little bit and mix that up. All right, so the recipe call, uh, says that you can just use like a cookie sheet, but I'm gonna use this baking dish and I'm going to just spray that with olive oil. I'm setting that to the side. I'm using these medium-sized tortillas. I guess you can use whatever you want, just it's gonna depend on how much stuff you put in here. But we're gonna start by putting in some of this cream cheese and salsa mixture. I'm hoping to get about four tortillas out of how much I'm making, but we'll see. Now we're gonna add on some taco meat and then we're gonna top it with some shredded cheese. 
And then we are going to roll this up like you would a burrito. And then I'm going to lay them seam side down in our baking dish. And you're gonna do this until you have all of your material gone. The original recipe, I think it said to use small tortillas and you would get 12 of them out of it. But I am um, using medium and I also didn't do quite as much of the filling stuff. Okay, so I ended up making five and I've got some melted butter here that we're just going to brush on top of each of these. We're gonna put these in the oven at 350 degrees for 15 minutes. And while that's in the oven, I'm gonna get our toppings ready. So mine for some reason didn't get golden brown. I put them in a little bit longer waiting for them to, but they're definitely a little crispy and they're plenty hot. I'm guessing maybe because I put them in a baking dish instead of a cookie sheet. I don't know, but we're gonna eat them. All right, so I just cut mine in half and topped it with some lettuce and sour cream and this chili lime seasoning from Trader Joe's. I love this stuff, but you could also add salsa or tomatoes, taco sauce or cheese, whatever you want. But this is our dinner for tonight. Looks great. For tonight's dinner, we are gonna be making a peanut chicken, which I'm really excited about. So we're gonna start with our peanut sauce. I have half a cup of water and half a cup of peanut butter. And we're adding in two tablespoons of sugar and then two tablespoons of soy sauce, or I am using coconut aminos. I'm gonna whisk this together, and once it's well combined, we're gonna set it aside. My peanut butter is like an all natural peanut butter that was in the refrigerator because it needed to be stored there. So I heated up my water a little bit, not like hot, but just warm to help kind of loosen up my peanut butter. As you can see, we're working on it still, but I'm just gonna whisk this until it's all combined. All right, so I have a pan heating up for the chicken, but I also have some water and it's now boiling. So I'm gonna go ahead and get our pasta in. It just says cooked noodles. I'm gonna do a half a pound and I'm gonna use this uh, shatara. I don't know if that's how it's said. I'm Italian, but not that Italian. The recipe does not say what type of noodles. Um, it just says cooked noodles. So I'm gonna get these in here and cook them. They take 11 minutes. So let's hope we can get everything else um, done in that amount of time. I am also going to steam up some broccoli, but just gonna steam up a bag of frozen broccoli. I'm not gonna show that. So my pan should be pretty good and heated up. I'm gonna put in a couple tablespoons of olive oil. I will have the recipe linked below. It does start by sauteing some onion, but I don't think, sorry, keep going in front of the camera. Um, personally, I don't think that that sounds super good for peanut chicken, so I'm not gonna do that. And you would be sauteing the onion and then adding in some garlic and red pepper flakes and then cooking the chicken. But since I'm gonna skip the onion, I'm gonna start by just doing the chicken. And then when the chicken's almost done, I'll add in the garlic and red pepper flakes. So I have two chicken breasts that I have just diced up here. I realize it's gonna start getting kind of loud and we are just going to cook them. Pan's a little crowded, so I'm just gonna have to keep moving them around to make sure they all cook evenly. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna let those go until they are fully cooked. This is gonna, like a seriously a super easy recipe, guys. I'm really excited about it. All right, so my chicken is just about done here. So I'm going to put in, I think the recipe called for like two cloves of garlic. So I'm just gonna put in, you know, however much I want. <laughs> and then just a pinch of red pepper flakes. So like I said, I did this a little differently than the recipe said, um, but you can take a look at that if you want. We'll give this a mix while the chicken finishes cooking and the garlic kind of settles in. There's quite a bit of liquid in here from my chicken. Um, the recipe didn't say anything about draining it, but I think I might <laughs> drain it. Um, anyways, my timer went off for the pasta, so I'm gonna go ahead and drain that really quick and let this finish cooking. All right, so I drained off some of the liquid, not all of it, and we're going to just pour our peanut sauce in with the chicken, and we're going to let that cook for just a couple of minutes. I don't know, I think it said two to four minutes maybe, and just want to coat all of the chicken and then let that just kind of simmer together, let the sauce heat up and just everything, you know, go together. I put a little bit of olive oil in the noodles so that it wouldn't stick. I don't know if I already said that. Here is our peanut chicken and our steamed broccoli. 
All right, there it is all plated up. We serve the chicken on top of the noodles and the broccoli on the side. And I'm looking forward to eating this. I'll try to remember to let you know what we think about it. All right, so it is the next day, but I did want to update you on that recipe. First, just to say that we really, really liked it. But there are a couple tweaks I would make. Uh, my husband thought the sauce was a little bit too thick, and the recipe did state that you could thin it out by just adding a little bit of water at a time if you thought it was too thick. Um, I also would have put more red pepper flakes because it was not quite, um, didn't have enough kick in it. And I also needed to add a little bit of salt, but I think that's because I was using like an all natural peanut butter that just, I think is literally just ground peanuts. I don't think there's anything else added. There's no sugar or anything else added. So I think that is why, other than that, we really liked it. Those pasta noodles were perfect for that. Um, my husband was like, they're just like lo mein. Don't change it. That was good. So highly recommend it. I may try like dredging some chicken in flour next time and frying it like that um, just to add that texture, but really good. And it's so simple to make. So, all right, that is it for today's video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new and I will see you next time. Bye guys.